Good morning, Bethlehem. I sure miss seeing you this morning on a uh, snowy Sunday. Sorry we had to cancel our, our worship in person today, but I'm glad I can join you by way of the broadcast today. I wanted to remind you of some church family announcements as we get going here this morning. I wanted to tell you, of course, Joe Reeves can't be with us today because of the weather. He's going to be rescheduled to come and share with us on a Sunday in the next few weeks, but uh, not today. Also, Pray and Go, which was to be launched again this afternoon right after church, it has been postponed to next Sunday. We will start Pray and Go next Sunday right after church, Lord willing, and no, no snow and ice. Um, also, next Sunday is a special Sunday. I hope you'll come be part of our deacon ordination service during the morning worship at 11 a.m. It's going to be a special time, not just for deacons and their families, but also for our entire church family. And I remind you that ordinations are something the church does uh, for the individual. So it, it involves all of us. So let's all try to be there for that. Uh, next Sunday's business meeting has been postponed uh, a week or two, so keep that in mind. Also, next Sunday, the 23rd at 6 p.m. is the missions team meeting. Uh, Going to be doing some planning for our mission trips and mission endeavors in the, uh, in the coming weeks. One final announcement, uh, the Bible study for women called Faith Has Come, it's a Galatians Bible study, has one open space for the 6 p.m. Thursday night Bible study. So if you want to be part of that, email me, text me, let me know so that you can have that last seat at the Bible study on Thursday nights. The Thursday morning session has been filled, uh, but we have one seat left for the Sunday, uh, the, the Thursday night. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, let us know this week if you want to do that. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then I'm going to share a message with you from God's Word. Lord, I thank you today that you are sovereign over all. You cause the sun to shine. You cause the rain to come. You cause the snow to fall. Uh, you are in complete control, and we trust you that on this Sunday... Uh, you've allowed us to be in our homes and to worship you together, though remotely online. We trust you with this. Lord, I ask you to bless the study of your word today, that it will touch someone, someone's heart and encourage them today and in the coming days. Uh, use your word here this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning's message... The Lord impressed on my heart to encourage you today as a follower of Jesus, don't waste your waiting. Don't waste your waiting. Now, I don't know of anybody who enjoys waiting. And over the last couple of years with a pandemic upon us, we have endured waiting after waiting, after waiting, we have faced having to wait for the economy to reopen. People had to wait for their surgeries to be scheduled. People had to uh, wait to get together and visit with family and friends. Trips were postponed. Uh, we've had to wait on the restaurants to reopen. And even now, after almost two years, we're waiting on shipments to come in. Uh, gone are the days that Amazon would have your package to you in just two days. Now it's three and four days we, we have to wait. We have to wait on products to be uh, restocked at the store. We have to wait in longer lines than usual because there are worker shortages. We have to wait on our tax refunds. We have to wait for church services to resume as they had in the past. We have to wait to get doctor's appointments and wait to get tested and wait for test results. We have to wait for insurance claims. We have to wait and wait and wait. Over the last couple of weeks, 
the snow came, the ice came, the electricity went off, and all of us were waiting. When will my lights come on? No phone, uh, no lights, no TV. When will the lights come on? We waited and we waited. It reminded me that even as you you wait this storm out here on this Sunday, that life is filled with times of waiting. We don't enjoy it, and most of us are not very good at it. So we wait. It's part of it's part of life. But I wanted to remind you this of this important point this morning. That while we're while we are waiting, God is working even in the midst of our waiting. We might feel anxious. We might feel frustrated. We might even feel stuck. But God is working in your waiting. And God wants to do a work in you during this time of waiting in your life. Are you in a season of waiting right now? And are you letting God do a work in and through your waiting? I want to direct your attention to Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. It's a very familiar verse to most of us. The text there in Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall walk, they shall run, and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The context of that very familiar verse is a time in Israel's history when they were wondering if the Lord even remembered them. And if he did remember them, they weren't sure that he genuinely cared for them. They were suffering uh, during Babylonian captivity. And they wondered, does the Lord even see us? Does he know us? How long are we going to have to wait for the Lord's deliverance? If you just go back just a few verses there in verse 27, he says, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? They felt unseen by the Lord. But the answer is this, Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exalted. But they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. God's saying to Israel, I see you, and you should know who I am by now. I care for you, and I want to strengthen you. So this morning, I want us to, to look at just a short list of the work that God does while we're waiting. There's a long list of the things that he can and will do in your life when you wait on him. But let's, let's list just three. From Isaiah 40, verse 31, I want you to see that, first of all, God wants to prepare you while you're waiting. He wants to prepare you, not so much for what you're going through now, but what's coming later in your life, what's coming down the road. That text says that you will run and not be weary. There's coming a day when you're going to be running and he needs to prepare you for that day of running so that you won't grow weary. It says you will walk and not faint. He wants to prepare you now for the day when you're going to need to walk and not give up hope. You know, a runner is only able to run with endurance if he has trained his body to endure. When a runner knows a long distance race is just ahead, that runner will begin to prepare his body to run that race. He'll change his resting habits, being sure he gets enough rest. 
He'll change his diet, making sure he's eating the, the proper foods. He will exercise, gaining strength. He will prioritize the upcoming race in his life. Did you know that God knows what race lies ahead for you? And out of his grace and his mercy, he prepares you now in this waiting period as a time to renew your strength now. He wants to build you up now for what's coming just ahead of you. You may not know what's just ahead, but God knows. So during this time of waiting, he will prepare you. He will prepare you to have the strength you'll need to run the course that's just ahead. So he would have you now during your waiting prepare yourself by focusing on your walk with him. By focusing on uh, cleaning up your diet of what's coming into your life and making sure you're getting the good word of God into your life. He'll help you learn to trust him more and more so that when the trouble comes, you can trust him more easily. He'll exercise your faith. He will grow you in the spiritual disciplines of prayer and of fasting and of being silent before him and being in solitude with him. He will prepare you through this time of waiting. You know, a, a football coach knows in order to get his team ready for the game, he's got to prepare his team. And a coach is not just focused on one game, he's focused on the season. In fact, a coach is also focused on the next two to three seasons. So he will tell his youngest players, like the freshmen on the team, hey, you've got to get in the weight room. You've got to get stronger. You've got to get prepared because there's going to come a time when you're going to be put into the game and you've got to be ready to play the game. There's going to come a time in two years, three years, when you're the starter on this football team. Now's the time to prepare. I know you're waiting for your time to play, but now's the time to prepare. You've got to hit, hit the weight room. We're reminded over in Hebrews chapter 12 that during these times of waiting, it's not very pleasant. We're not necessarily enjoying ourselves while we wait upon the Lord. It says there, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. Let God train you during this time of waiting, preparing you, getting your faith stronger, getting your life focused, getting you ready for the days that are ahead. Let me ask you, are, are you allowing the Lord to use this season of waiting in your life to draw you closer to him? Are you applying yourself to know him more and, and get stronger in the Lord? Or during your waiting time, are you just coping, waiting on life to get back to normal? Are you just coasting along, not really applying yourself to your spiritual life or are you just going through this season of waiting just complaining about how long is this going to take God will prepare you during your times of waiting but that's not the only work he does when we look back at Isaiah 40 verse 31 we also see that God wants to produce something in you specifically here the Bible says God is renewing strength in those who are waiting on the Lord when the Lord can slow us down enough, when the Lord stops us in our tracks, when the Lord hits the brakes for us, it gives us time to evaluate our lives. It gives us time to take stock or to soul search. And when he stops us in our tracks, gone are the days when we have every other priority in life but the Lord. And he can bring us back to him being the priority in our lives. He will set aside all these pursuits that we're busy, busy, busy pursuing these things. And life stops and we have to wait upon him. And he can use that to produce really good things in us. 
He removes those pressures in life so that we can focus on our relationship with Him. He removes all the distractions of life so that we can focus on what He wants us to focus on. So the Lord, during those times when He causes us to have to wait, He does a work in our hearts. He does a work in our minds. He'll, he'll do a work in our, in our behaviors. He'll, he'll do a work in our priorities. God will use this time in your life of waiting to produce some really good things. Now, some things are obvious. When we're waiting on the Lord, one thing that he will produce in us is patience. That is waiting on him, believing in him, trusting in him. He's going to come through and we learn patience during these times of waiting. But you know, sometimes the Lord might surprise you. When he puts you in a holding pattern, he might surprise you with some work that you didn't even expect him to do in your life. A lot of times that has to do with your purity or your Christ-likeness. He'll show you things when life stands still that you wouldn't have seen when life was just a blur. Things that he wants to change in you to make you a different person, to be more like Christ, to be more pure of heart. The question is, are we listening to him? Are we looking into our hearts to see what really lies there? Are we, are we willing to learn what God wants us to learn, the lesson during this time of waiting? You know, over the Christmas break, my family and I went to Mississippi to spend Christmas with our daughter, our son, our son-in-law, daughter-in-law, and our brand new grandbaby Summer. And on the way down to Mississippi, our Suburban broke down. And you know I've had a lot of trouble out of the Suburban lately. Well, we were able to get to Mississippi in the truck and I immediately put it in the shop. But then I began a waiting process. I had to wait on the shop to diagnose the problem, which took a couple of days. I had to wait for the warranty company, for the car warranty, to make a decision about the diagnosis. There was a misdiagnosis on the, on the vehicle, which took even longer to finalize that process. Then there was a delay in the shipping. I had to get a new motor put in the Suburban. There was a delay in the shipping of the motor. And then you had the holiday break when everything was closed, not to mention the New Year's week that followed. There was a delay in shipping. And then once they got the parts they needed, I had to wait on the repair to be made. It was taking so long I was waiting, and I was waiting, and I was waiting. We waited so long, Robin had to stay with the truck, and I had to come back to Virginia uh, to go back to work. And it took almost two weeks to get this repair done after they finally got the parts in stock. I was back here in Virginia, and I was waiting, and I was waiting, and I was waiting, waiting on that phone call from the automobile shop, waiting on that phone call from the warranty company, waiting on the day Robin and Penny and the dogs could come back home. I was missing them and I, I wanted them back home with me. But I wanted to tell you that during that time of being alone, there was no pitter patter of the dogs, uh, paws running across the floor, uh, not the responsibilities of, of home life. It was, it was just me alone. And you know, the Lord touched my heart during those days in unexpected ways. He showed me things about my life and about my heart that he wanted changed. And I was able to draw closer to the Lord because God put my life on hold. God rearranged my life for three weeks in a way that I didn't ask for, I didn't necessarily want, I didn't expect, but God knew he wanted to do a work in my heart and he used those days of waiting on that truck repair to do that. It reminds me of what 
Paul wrote to the Romans in Romans chapter 5, verse 4. He says, We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. I'm, I'm telling you today that during your waiting, God wants to produce something in you, and he'll do that. If you'll listen, if you will draw near to him. Here's how James put it in his letter. He says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing your, of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing. Sometimes we don't know what we need, but God knows, and he'll put our lives on hold. He'll throw the brakes on. At times, God will put you flat on your back, as they say, to make you look up, because God wants to produce something in you that you may not get any other way. He wants to produce good things in your life, but the question is, while you're still, are you listening? Are you willing to learn? Are you willing to let him change your life? Are you willing to fall more and more in love with the Lord during this time of waiting? So, God works in us to prepare us when we wait. God works in us to produce good things in us while we wait. And there's one more, and this is probably the most uh, precious of them all. Listen, God wants to get personal with you during your time of waiting. You see, by his grace and mercy, God will not leave you in a dry and distant relationship with himself. He won't settle for you just going through the motions or just obeying out of duty or out of trying to follow the rules God wants you to know him personally and deeply the fact that you're having to wait right now on whatever solution or answer or whatever you're waiting for right now this time of waiting I believe is God's personal invitation to you to, to come close to him to draw near to the Lord to, to know him more. God wants to, to quiet the flood of information that's been coming into your life through your busy life. He wants to stop all that while you wait and say, listen, tune in to me. Tune in to my voice. He wants to halt your frantic pace of life, slowing you down so you can focus and hear him. He wants to still your racing mind so that you can hear him speak peace into your heart. He wants to stop your running and rushing around so he causes you to wait upon him so that you can get to know him in a personal way. Picture yourself, maybe it was just two weekends ago. Picture yourself, you're in a dark room, no electricity, all you got is a flashlight. You're all huddled over there in your chair. You've got a blanket or two wrapped all around you. You're all alone with your thoughts going around in your head. And what are you experiencing right then and there? There's nothing much going on. There are not many options of things that you can do. What are you experiencing? Are you experiencing anxiousness while you wait? Are you experiencing frustration while you wait? Are you troubled? Are you bored? Are you just tired and worn out, ready to get back to normal? Or are you experiencing the peace that comes in closeness with the Lord? The Lord's using this time of waiting to draw you close. If you'll call out to him, asking him to draw you near, he will do just that. Isaiah 26.3 says that he will keep 
him in perfect peace, whose mind is fixed on him, for he trusts in him. The Lord wants to return your focus and renew your mind and renew your strength and give you peace in your life, the peace that only comes through a close walk with him. And he'll use this time of waiting just to do that. You know, one day, on your last day on earth, when everything else is stripped away, it's, it's going to be just you and the Lord. Nothing else really will matter. You and the Lord. When that time comes, will you be at peace with him because you know him and you have spent your life drawing close to him? Or will you come to that point when it's just you and him and you'll find yourself at a distance from him? That your relationship is not warm and loving and close, but dry and, and, and not real personable? The Lord wants you to know him. He wants you to find out the Lord is enough. When you don't have your phone and you don't have your TV and you can't get out and go and do what you want to do and you're just waiting on the Lord, He wants to teach you He is enough for you. He is enough to give you peace in the deepest part of your being. Let me ask you, when all this waiting is over, whether it's from weather or whether it's the pandemic, when all the waiting is over, are you going to go back to running? Are you going to go back to distractions? Are you going to go back to stress? Are you going to go back to being overloaded? Are you going to go back to being at a distance from the Lord? Or will you find peace now through a closeness to the Lord that you haven't had in a long time? And will you walk closely with the Lord while the waiting is over? Oh, the Lord... He's preparing you for days ahead. You're going to need the strength he wants to give you now. Draw near to him. The Lord wants to produce things in you you may not even know that you need. But if you'll draw near while you wait, he'll produce that in you. And listen, he wants to be personally involved in your life. He wants you to know him personally and deeply. Will you draw near to the Lord on this Sunday morning? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, I thank you for your word today that reminds us that you work in a variety of ways. And one of those times you get a lot of work done in us is during those times of waiting. Help us, Lord, to wait upon you, not upon a solution to our problem or for the the power company to get our lights back on. That's not what we're waiting on. We're waiting on the Lord to come near to us and give us the strength that we need. Lord, I pray for those who are watching here today that you will prepare them out of your grace and mercy with the strength they need for the days ahead. I pray you will produce in them the good things you want to produce in them during this time of waiting. And I pray they'll listen to you and learn from you and love you and turn to you and know you in a deep and personal way because of this time that they had to wait upon you. Thank you, Lord, for our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. It's been good, really good to be with you this morning. Uh, Lord willing, we'll be back to a regular schedule next Sunday with 9 a.m. worship. 10 a.m. Bible study, and 11 a.m. morning worship. Hope to see you then. God bless.